A lady walked into the pastor's office. The pastor had never met with her before. She said, Preacher, you will be shocked by my story. My story is going to shock you. But the pastor assured her that he would not be shocked because after 25 years of counseling, the pastor had heard it all. So nothing really would shock the pastor. And so she began. She began by saying, Pastor, I hate my husband. I just hate him. I, I hate my husband. I hate the way he looks like. He has gotten fat. I hate the way he talks. He chews his food while his mouth is open. I hate the way he brushes his teeth. He snores at night and makes all kinds of noises when he blows his nose. Pastor, I just don't love him anymore. I hate him from the bottom of my heart. And she went on and on and on giving reason after reason after reason, a long list of reasons why she hated her husband. The pastor was shocked. I mean, because for all the time, you know, of course he's, he's, he had heard you know, such issues, but this was a little bit blunt. It was scathing and it was really cutting deeper as she made the comments. After pausing, the pastor asked a question. Has it always been that way? Has it always been like this before? Or what, what, what happened? The lady said, no pastor. It has not always been this way. He used to be kind. He used to be gentle. And he used to be sensitive. I can remember our courtship. and I can remember how romantic he was. I can remember the intimate conversations, the long phone calls, and, and the endless chats that we used to have. I remember the dinners and the candlelights. I remember our wonderful wedding and our honeymoon, a very exquisite you know, event. I remember those early years of struggling. Together with that man, when we were having children, and we didn't have enough money, but, you know, we would be able to manage and navigate through the issues of life together. Uh, there were good times. I miss those days. There was a time when we were very much in love. So much in love, first, I remember. And I miss those days. Let me pause to say I'm so much scared to think. It can happen also to us in our Christian work. A person gets saved and it's so wonderful a time. They are on fire for Jesus. Loving Jesus. Willing to give for the sake of Jesus Christ. Willing to surrender everything for Jesus. And, and there's such a feeling of peace. A feeling of joy and deep love. You can see it. I've seen people surrender their lives to Jesus against all odds, even against their opposition. The family members said, no, you can't do it. But they say, I am doing it. I am giving my life to Jesus Christ. And I'm even willing to be baptized and do everything that is required. I am surrendering to Jesus. I have seen that for all the years of my ministry. I've seen people surrendering their lives to Jesus Christ. I've seen their deep desire for God and nothing Practically nothing can stop them because they are on fire for Jesus. But, but you know what, my friend, there comes a time or season that we begin to lose a zeal that we had as we were new believers. We, we start losing it. We start relaxing it. And our relationship with Jesus Christ starts to become stale. A time when the newness wears off and we begin losing that seemingly unquenchable passion for Jesus. And we wonder what really happened. Things become stale and we do everything we are supposed to do because it's an obligation. I'm required to pray. I'm required to go to church. I'm required to hold devotions. I'm required to, it's, it's just an obligation. But, but there is no 
communion, there is no connection, there is no fervency, there is no fire between you and Jesus Christ because we've lost the excitement. We've lost the passion. And I'm asking you this morning, my friend, listening to me, are you in that position where you can look back and you wonder, where is the flame? Where is the fire? Where is the love? May God bless you, my friend. May he touch you this morning. And I want to pray with you. Let's pray together. Dear loving Father, we thank you so much this morning. We thank you, God, for challenging us this morning that we've got to remember. Because you miss us so much. God, you miss the first love. You miss our devotion when we were willing to give everything, to surrender everything to you. But God, along the way, we got distracted and we've wandered far away from your presence. But this morning, God, you are asking and you are inviting us to remember, to repent, and to return. Accept us, Jesus, just as we are. Just as we are, God, without any single plea, we come to you. Accept us, Jesus, and forgive us of our sins. And you've promised that you will heal our backsliding and you will love us freely. Bless us, God, and touch our lives this morning. This is our prayer, trusting and believing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And may we shout a big amen. Amen.